Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we are looking at a data set of temperature change on Earth. Um, so you could consider it a global warming data set. Uh, we have different uh, temperature changes and standard deviations uh, of, ch of temperature uh, over a period of time. Uh, so we have different countries and uh, different months, uh, and then we have time series uh, of all the different years. You can see from 1961 all the way to 2019. And we're going to try to use time series forecasting to predict um, the next 15 years of global temperature change. So let's hop into the notebook. Um, I'm going to use Facebook's profit model uh, to make our predictions. So down here I've imported uh, from FB profit, uh, profit. And we're just going to use NumPy and Pandas uh, to work with the data and Plotly to visualize the time series. So let's go ahead and import that. Uh, it is Plotly Express I'm using. Uh, and we'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. So we're going to grab this file path right here. Uh, this is the time series data frame. So I'm importing that. Oh, and we have an encoding error, so I'm just going to go in here, type encoding equals Latin 1 and we can see the data. So here's our time, the time series portion of the data. Um, and then this is the unit, it's all in Celsius. Uh, and then we have two different things we're measuring here, the change in temperature and the standard deviation. Uh, and I'm gonna try to predict the change in temperature. So I'm gonna drop all the standard deviation ones. Uh, and then we also have months. Um, and this is a little uh, interesting because Okay, well, let's look at this. Data.info. Uh, you can see we have missing values. Uh, there are missing values in almost all of these time series columns. Uh, so it would be difficult to predict just one of these columns. What I'm going to try to do is average them all together and predict the global temperature, uh, average global temperature, um, average change in global temperature uh, for the next 15 years. So let's get started with pre-processing. This is just going to be a short uh, pre-processing. We want to get the time series data into a format that Facebook's profit model likes. And so the profit model requires you have a data frame with two columns. One that's called DS, which is the, um, the date uh, values, and one called Y, which is your actual values that you want to predict. So let's create this function, pre-process inputs. Uh, and this is taking in the data frame. It's going to make a copy of the data frame. Uh, and then the first thing we'll do is query, uh, well actually we'll say just remove uh, these standard deviation examples. So uh, I want to return the data frame and we can see what it looks like down here. I'm going to call the output time series. And that's going to be preprocess inputs uh, and I pass in data. So time series currently is just the data frame. Uh, and we want to remove all these standard deviation examples. So I'm going to do up here is say df equals df.query. And the query we're going to use is element equals temperature change. So we're only going to get the temperature change examples. Uh, and you'll see they now only have the temperature change columns. So we have 4,828 rows. Um, the next thing I will notice is that uh, we have different data from different parts of the year uh, for a given country. So if we wanted to uh, predict for January, uh, maybe we could take the mean of all the countries in, for January, uh, but I'm going to try to predict yearly temperature. So I'm going to average all the months together uh, and group the countries into uh, their own examples. So we're going to group countries uh, and take their mean means so that we can use the uh, df.groupby for this and we're going to group by area which is the country name uh, and then we're going to take the mean of each group uh, and so the new data frame is going to be the, e the mean of each group and you can see that has already eliminated all of the um, all of the text columns so we're just because you can't take the mean of text columns so these are the means of all of the numerical columns, including our whole time series. 
Uh, so these three aren't really useful to me, right? We only want to focus on the uh, time series data. So uh, we're going to remove those columns. Uh, so use only time series data. And for that, we can just use loc. Uh, we're targeting all rows. And the columns we want is uh, y, uh, y uh, 1961 until the end. So everything from here onwards. Uh, oh. All right, here it is. This is the full time series. Uh, you see we, we do have some missing values here. Um, uh, so it wouldn't be uh, a good idea to try to predict uh, a, a single country's uh, values because we don't have all the data for each country. So what we're going to do is predict the average uh, global temperature um, by taking the mean. So uh, get a global mean temperature change. And so for this, all we have to do is take uh, df.mean. Uh, this will give us a series though, so I'm going to turn it back into a data frame. Uh, and I'm going to reset the index. Uh, I'll show you why actually. So if we get this, uh, we have now the data frame we want. However, we want these indexes, indices on as a column so that the profit model can use them. So we're going to reset the index. Uh, with drop equals false so that the old indices get used as a new column uh, and then I'm going to rename these columns like I said the profit model uh, requires that the column names are DS uh, and Y respectively so this is the right form to, to be put into the model. Last thing we have to do is just change these, uh, take these Y's off the beginning of the year values. Fix year column. So we're going to take DS and we're going to apply a function to it that takes uh, an X, which is a given one of these values, and it's going to return uh, all everything but the first character. And then I'll turn it into integers after that. All right, and now we're ready to go. Um, so let's plot it first. I'm going to use Plotly Express to plot the time series. So uh, px dot line is how you create a line plot. I'm going to call it fig, uh, and we're going to plot time series. That's our data frame. Our x is just the ds column. Our y is just the Y column. And our labels, uh, DS will be year. And Y will be change in temperature in degrees Celsius. Then the title will be average global temperature change over time. All right, and we'll do fig.show, uh, and we should be able to see it right here. So you can see it is going up, uh, as we all know. Um, and we're going to try, first we're gonna, what we're going to do is do an in-sample uh, forecasting, which means we, we forecast on data that's already in our sample. So we're, we'll chop it off around 2000, maybe 2005. Uh, and we'll forecast everything after that uh, using the fit of just the previous data. And that way we can sort of get a sense of how the model's doing. Uh, we don't, and we'll do that before we do our out of sample forecast, which is we'll try to predict future data that we don't know. Uh, so let's do that first. In sample forecast. So I'm going to split it into a train and test set for this time train is going to be the time series uh, out the dot i loc uh, index location. Uh, we will index, and I'll make a copy of it, but we want the only only up to 2005. Uh, what, I'll, what I'll do is try to predict 2005 to 2019. 
So I only want it up to here. So uh, 0 to 44 and all columns. All right, and then we're going to, well, all right, we'll do it like that. Uh, and then we'll do time test, which is just the reverse from 44 to the end. Uh, so if we look at this time train, it's just uh, the f up to 2004, and time test is 2005 to 2019. So this is what we're going to try to predict, uh, and we're going to fit the model on time train. So let's create our model. I'll call this in model since it's the in sample model, uh, and that'll be profit. And all we have to do is call in model dot fit on time train. And the model has been fit. Uh, and now we'll ask it to make predictions on the test set. Um, so if we call model dot predict uh, in model dot predict, and we pass in um, time test. Uh, it's not going to look at the answers, don't worry. It's just looking at the dates and trying to make predictions for it. And you can see these are the values it came up with. Uh, so these are the values that it has predicted um, using the fit uh, for each of these dates. And you can see it's doing January 1st, 01. That doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's, it just needs to input a month and day. All right, so let's uh, let's just get. Uh, well, you can see it comes up with a lot of different uh, um, stats as well. I'm really interested in y hat, which is the prediction. Uh, I'm not going into all these other ones, but you can see we also have a lower and upper bound on the prediction. So if you wanted to do like that little like uh, range thing where it shows the like the spread, um, you could do that with this. Uh, all right, and let us now just get the two columns we want. So I'm getting all rows, and the columns we want are ds and y hat. And this I'll call in forecast. So if we look at in forecast, uh, you can see these are the dates, um, and we have the y hats. So what I'm going to do is just change this back to just a year value. So uh, in forecast sub ds equals in forecast sub ds dot apply, apply uh, lambda x to x dot year. So these are actually encoded as daytime objects so we can use dot year on them to get just back uh, just get back the year. Uh, and then we'll take another look at it after that. Uh, and you can see they're just the years now. So now let's plot this prediction. What I'll cr uh, create is a result DF. So if we take the time series, which is all the data, uh, and we merge on the uh, we merge the merge it with the in forecast, which is what we just created, uh, and we're merging on uh, the DS column. Uh, you'll see if we run this, it'll only use the examples um, that uh, that there are values for the y hat. Um, so this is just the test examples. So I want to use all examples in the time series. So I'm doing how equals left, and that will do uh, a left merge like so. So uh, you'll see the ones that it does have get put on, but then we have missing values for all the original values, uh, the original dates. So I'll call this in result uh, df. That will be the result of our forecast uh, like next to the series. A time ser original time series. And then we will plot it. So fig uh, will be px.line. So the data frame here is in result df. The x uh, is ds. The y is now two columns. I want to predict y and y hat. Uh, and I'll give them each their own color I'll, with color discrete sequence. Um, the y, I'm going to give it a black. And the y hat, I'll give it red. And we'll give it labels. I want to give it the the same label as before. Actually, I'm just going to label the uh, ds. And the title, 
Yeah, it's going to be the same as before, so let me just grab it. Alright, and let's take a look. Labels, not label. Alright, and you can see the prediction here. Um, so, eh, it's not too far off, but it, it definitely seems, it seems a lot lower than uh, what is actually happening. So it looks like this is going up faster than the prediction uh, believes it will. So um, now that we've done the in-sample forecast, let's do the out-of-sample forecast. All right, and for this, I'm going to create a future DF. So this is going to be a DF of dates, uh, which is basically just a data frame consisting of a NumPy A range uh, from values 2020 until 2046. Uh, so I'm going to give the column name DS to stay in, in line with the other. Right. And let's take a look at it. So we're going to predict on this. We have, we have uh, 2020 until 2045. And we're going to try to make predictions for these next 15 years. I mean, technically we already know 2020, but um, it wasn't in the data set, so we'll make a forecast for that as well. All right, and then we'll create an out model, which is our out of sample uh, model, which is also a profit. Uh, and then we call out model.fit, and we're fitting on the whole time series now, not just the train set. Uh, and once it's been fit, we're going to create our out forecast, which is our out model.predict. Here we're predicting on the future DF. And we're just going to get the DS uh, like before. I'm getting just uh, the DS and Y hat columns. So if we look at this, um, here's our forecast for 2020 until 2045. Now I would like to uh, just change the column like I did before. So let me go and grab. Uh, this line here, I'm just going to take off, it's going to change it to just a year. Oh no, it says in, out, there we go. Oh no, out also. Alright, and last thing I want to do is uh, plot this forecast uh, with after the whole time series. Oh, so I'm going to create an out result DF, which is our result DF for the out out of sample forecast. And for this, I'm not going to merge since there's no overlapping examples. I'm going to concatenate. So we're concatenating uh, the original time series and the new out forecast uh, on axis zero, so on top of each other. Um, and if we take a look at this, it looks like this. Uh, there's 85 rows. Uh, let me let me just show all the um, the columns here. So I'm setting max columns to none, and then we can see. Oh, sorry, it should be max rows. Pandas dot set option max rows none. All right, and uh, we can see. Uh, for the first part of the time series, we don't have any predictions because that was what we fitted on. And then it switches over at 2020 to we have no more actual time series data and then we just have predictions going forward. So let's use this to plot uh, in, I guess, the same way we did up here. So I'll just grab this code and modify it. Uh, so this is just going to be out result DF. Uh, same, the rest is the same. So let's see. All right, and this is the prediction. So it, it definitely is predicting a rise uh, in temperature change, um, but we'll have to see what happens. So uh, that will sum up today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.